Hey, everybody, as we get uh, everybody logging in, I'm going to give you a quick uh, view of where I am. Uh, I am in uh, Canada here at, in Sarnia, and this is what I'm staring at right now. And uh, it's uh, right across the bridge from uh, Port Huron in Michigan. And so I am joining you remotely from from uh, far-flung Canada. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. This one's going to be a lot of fun, everybody. So, so this is one of those uh, webinars that if you know somebody who has a show and, but isn't happy with the growth of the show, they're not happy with um, – you know, the quality of the guests that they're getting. Uh, we're, we're really going to cover a lot of really wonderful stuff today. And I'm joined, as always, by Jessica. And we're going to take a second to introduce right. ourselves right here. So um, the funny thing is, is, you know, I get uh, teased often about my picture of me doing this and always <laughs> having like a, a wide open smile. This picture is living proof that uh, uh, I've been this way since I was like four. And so this has been a uh, part of my look. This is actually my brother and I, we were attending a wedding, which is why he was all dressed up and why I wasn't. And uh, I absolutely drove my family absolutely insane. So, uh, and Jessica? Yes, Matt, I love the sweater vest you're wearing. It's like, I, I would, I never noticed that. Like I would wear that right now. <laughs> Give it to me. Uh, all right, for me, yes, I'm Jessica. If, I, if we haven't had the pleasure of meeting yet, hello. I work in the marketing department at Proudmouth. I create and plan content for all of our major channels. And I am lucky enough to be the producer of the Top Advisor Marketing Podcast. And oh my gosh, Matt, next week we're publishing episode 478. Like 500 is, you know, it's in sight. And it's, it's so awesome. We're actually um, ranked in the top 2.5% of the most most popular shows globally ranked by listen score so super grateful for that and excited to share with all of you you know what we've learned from working on our podcast and working with advisors podcasts to help you grow your own audience with the right people let's get into it yeah and, and just with, with with that so so this first piece of uh, advice that we're going to provide is based off of uh, the 7,000 episodes we've done for financial services professionals. And we found that the best podcast, so, so what we're telling you right here is the philosophical underpinnings of everything that you need to do with these other major kind of growth hacks that we're gonna go through. Every one of your shows needs to have storytelling, education, entertainment, call to action. And if you haven't heard us present on this before, please go back and listen to a bunch of the other webinars because to be brutally honest, we do talk about this uh, often. Uh, but I'm really just going to focus on the entertainment component of these four things right now, because one of the biggest issues with your show is that you're not actually remembering it's a show and showing up, bringing your energy, having the confidence. Those are vitally important for you to really truly engage your audience, because if you don't, and I have been quoted in saying this, you're half assing your show, you need to whole ass your show. So, um, yes. And, uh, and if you have any questions or comments, please make sure that you put them in the chat. Um, thank you, Andrew, for going ahead and commenting already. Um, we would love to have you drop the links of your show in the Q&A or in the chat so that other financial services professionals can support your show uh, and maybe, uh, you know, maybe even give you a call and you guys can uh, swap uh, and do a podcast swap as a guest perspective. All right. So there's a perfect content formula. All right. <laughs> Every great show, whether it's television, radio, whether it's news organizations, you really have to be comfortable standing up for something you really believe in or standing up against something you don't. And, and as we're, Jessica and I were practicing this, we were talking about having all of you take a moment, and I want you to do this, is put in the chat um what is something you're either really really for or really really against that would make a difference in your content marketing strategy um you know whether it's uh maybe you are uh, somebody who is uh, very life insurance focused and you believe life insurance is you know the solution that most people can afford maybe you hate life insurance maybe you don't like cfps maybe 
maybe you love CFPs. That's the sort of stuff. So, so put those in the chat and Jessica will, will uh, stop me from talking when we, we get some stuff in there. These are conversations that you're already having behind closed doors. And what we always talk about here at Proudmouth is for you to be your own loud and rise above the noise. So these are conversations you're already having. Maybe you're talking more and more about, um, you know, fighting against uh, Ken Fisher uh, and his anti-annuity stance or the way that he, um, oh, look, J thank you, Jerome. Yeah, this is wonderful. Wow, we're getting some good stuff in here, Jess. Yeah. Um, maybe you are uh, for liberty and you want, uh, you know, no government intervention. Maybe you're huge on saving people uh, tax. These are the exact conversations that we know that you're having behind closed doors. And as long as you're not violating compliance guidelines, we believe, and we know this, and we're gonna show you an example in just a second, of when you do bring this out into the public, that you're gonna get a substantial amount of attention. Now, the other thing that's very important to understand is, is you shouldn't just come on and, and go on a 30 minute tirade about something you hate. Very few people are gonna to listen to that. Very few of you are trained to be able to do that, which is really good to make sure you have a co-host. Having somebody interview you about that is really, really important. Um, but what this really does is this makes the right people more attracted to you and the wrong people will be repelled from you. And that's, that's important. So Jessica, you know, we've talked about this a lot with the Top Advisor Marketing Podcast. You know, what, what, what do you have, you know, in the first few minutes here that you'd like to add? I, you know what, I love this topic and I, I'm really excited to get to the example. Is that okay? That's yeah, not, yeah, let's go to the example. Yeah, not yeah, like yeah. a cop out. I'm like, <laughs> oh, we have this quote first. Yeah. I, can, yeah. I can speak to this. I can speak to this. Um, I do want to read it. People will do anything for those who encourage their dreams, justify their failures, allay their fears, confirm their suspicions, and help them throw rocks at their enemies. So really, this power move, it's all about helping your audience confirm their suspicion. The thing that's been, you know, derailing their lives, but they never had the, I don't know if it's like the permission or empowerment to really realize it. You're helping them throw rocks at their enemies. Again, that could be like a public figure. This is very like David and Goliath. That could be like, you know, a public figure or conventional wisdom that's hurting them in some way. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Matt, go ahead. Well, I just, I just love, I love that. If you're going to, if you're going to stand for or against something, you really do want to know that the person who's standing next to you believes the same thing. And, and if you don't specifically share that, so, um, so my grandmother used to tell me, uh, as a gentleman, there is uh, types of polite conversation. You don't talk about sex. You don't talk about money. You don't talk about politics and you don't talk about religion. Now we're already breaking one of those rules because all of us talk about money all the time. I would keep that in mind for the rest though. Like I wouldn't, unless it's part of your brand, go heavy political. Unless it's part of your brand, I wouldn't go heavy religion. And I don't know how many of you are comfortable talking about sex at all, but that's another one of those things that we probably don't want you to do that unless that's really, really part of your brand. And this is the two questions that Jessica had put here are so important for you to answer. So, and that's another good chat opportunity, Jessica, I think here is what is something that you wish more people in your niche knew? And just share that with other people you know, that, that are on the webinar with us today. And then again, what conventional wisdom is holding your ideal clients back from achieving whatever you want them to achieve? And that's where you're going to be throwing the rocks at people. But I, I love the rocks analogy, but I, what I really, really want all of you to focus on is that these are people who are going to confirm your who, your why, and what makes you fundamentally you that's this stance. So let's let's get to this example because yeah. is, is that. that the next one? Yes, yes. It is. <laughs> I know. Right. Do you want to take? Do you want to start with this? Yeah, this is one of our amazing clients, by the way, um, Christine Lucan. She did a podcast episode, and I think um, supportive, like a complimentary blog with it, all about. Well, you can see she disagrees with Dave Ramsey. 
not Dave Ramsey as a person. <laughs> it wasn't disparaging mm-hmm. Dave Ramsey, but some of his philosophies that are actually, in her opinion, unsustainable for people and can lead to financial burnout. So with a title like this, Matt, <laughs> she's not playing <laughs> around and I and I yeah. love it because this is a perfect way to catch people's attention and not just for a second, but get them really interested in what Christine has to say. And, oh my gosh, she disagrees with Dave. Like why? Well, and, and with that, I'm sorry, can you just go back to one one quick second here? So, so look at the picture of Dave Ramsey. That's going to get clicks, right? And and my favorite part about this, and then we will move off this because we got a lot more to cover is if you love Dave Ramsey, you're going to listen to this. If you don't love Dave Ramsey, you're going to listen to this. And so, because, you know, if you love Dave Ramsey, you're going to look for confirmation bias. Oh, well, Christine doesn't believe that, but I do. But if you don't mm-hmm. like Dave Ramsey, you're going to be like, I really like Christine because she disagrees with the same stuff that I do. Um, by the way, this ended up getting tens of thousands of views uh, on just LinkedIn. Not uh, That's the only one that I actually paid attention to, Jessica. I didn't look at how many downloads she had or anything like that. But this is by far her most popular episode. It is one that she refers. So she's a financial coach who refers people to this episode to make sure that you're they're philosophically aligned before you're going to hire Christine. Right, right. I want to have a look at how she marketed this episode and just see mm-hmm. what we can learn from that. This is the summary, just so we could kind of see, you know, a little bit of how this episode was working and how you can create your own summary like this. Christine starts by presenting the problem. A Ramsey's extreme measures might not be sustainable and then goes very quickly into the solution. So this summary, you know, it sets the tone for the episode. Clearly the episode's mm-hmm. not all about like, ripping apart it would never be christine would never do that it wouldn't you know it's not about ripping someone apart but look it's about challenging in the third paragraph challenging their philosophies and you know in the second sentence she argues she challenges she argues these are powerful words there's a little bit of tension here but it's not all about critiquing dave ramsey it's about helping people find the approach that works for them it's a it's a constructive productive conversation with a high entertainment value. And like you said, this is a show. It has to be compelling. I like how I'm a bit farther down. Christine says, get ready to have some fun, right? Like, this isn't like an angry thing. (laughs) It's, you know, it's a fun conversation. And I love that. Is there anything you would add, Matt, before I go on? I'm going to show her social media post. Yeah, just look, the, the, there are very specific keywords that are, are here that make such a big difference. Yes. How blind, why blindly following anybody, yes. right? I mean, see, there's just these little things that just really drive the point home that she's talking about so that <clears throat> one of the powers of podcasting that a lot of you don't understand is It's not that they actually have to listen to the show. It's the headline, right? Uh, We know we want them to listen to the show and we're hoping that we build a relationship with them enough that they're going to listen to the show. Um, Maybe they're just going to go ahead and read the summary. Maybe they're just going to read the social media post. So go ahead and show the social media post. Let's let's, uh, let's bring this up. I agree. That's why you always want to give people enough that they can get an insight and learn something about you or from you, even if they don't Mm -hmm. go to the episode right now or yet forever (laughs) but you know hopefully they do this is the post that christine wrote and oh my gosh just something we can learn here in that first sentence right out the gates i disagree with dave ramsey and it's she carries the playfulness in with like the monkey (laughs) emoji um so you can start your post with something very bold like this now you don't have to go up against a public figure you could go up against i don't know like the snowball method for, you know, debt reduction, just something you don't believe. Like, I don't agree with this or I'm tired of, I'm tired of my niche, you know, failing when they deserve to succeed because they're following this advice. There are a few ways you can open up this post. And we actually did a webinar, Matt and I recently about LinkedIn posts that give you a competitive edge. And this was one of them taking that bold stance. Mm -hmm. So when we send the replay, of this webinar, I'll send the link to it. And it's on our YouTube channel because we really dissected this post and shared how to write more posts like this. 
But something I'll quickly say is another iteration of this post that I would make is to take one of these like discussion points, like let's just say the Dave's <laughs> crappy credit card advice and dig into why, say if I'm Christine, why I disagree with that, give people something, I start a conversation in the chat that way. And then say, you know, to hear about the other four things, there are four other things I disagree with, click on this episode. So that's another way to give people insight without them having to go to a different platform. Okay. And, and we say this often, but content begets content, right? And so how awesome would it be for Christine to take each of these topics and say, why I disagree with Ramsey part two. I, I mean, there's so much opportunity oh, here. Um, to continue this momentum that she had in order to make it so that she gets more and more people paying attention to her content. Oh, it's so true. And it was a popular episode. So it's like, bring it back. You can always bring your episodes back, even mm -hmm. with a slightly different spin like Matt is talking about. So, oh mm -hmm. my gosh, I love that. Okay, number two. Dum, dum, dum. So uh, <laughs> many of you have heard me say this for years. Um but but this is how we grew Proudmouth, right? So the center of influence strategy is absolutely what we did. Now, there are a lot of financial advisors who will say to me, Matt, I can't do this. That is not correct. There are always ways to be able to do this in a compliant manner. We're more than happy to talk to you about uh, how you can do that. But there are so many reasons why this strategy, this power move really, really works. The first one is, it's really borrowed credibility, right? Our 100th episode, uh, which of course we're on 480, I think is what you said, 78. Our 100th episode was Michael Kitsis, right? You know, we, we've had pretty much every major power player on our show and the price of admission to come on the show is that they share the podcast with their network. So, all right, let's start breaking this down. Yeah, yeah. All of you, so you all have homework. Uh, and I'm, I'm what we're 15 minutes in and I'm giving all of you homework. Um, and in fact, I, I'd love for you to share this, but some of you might not feel comfortable sharing this, but I want to know if you could interview anybody for your show, who would it be? Anybody, right? I would love to interview Phil Donahue. Um, mostly because he was so pivotal for me and I wanted to be Phil Donahue growing up. I wanted to have a TV show. I wanted to interview people. I loved his suits. Um, I loved his microphone. I mean, I just loved everything about Bill Donahue. And I know he's like 950 years old now, but I would absolutely love to have the opportunity to do that. But so let's break down why, right? So what, what do you do with this? So, so you, 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 you're going to invite the COI to become a guest on your show. And something that all of you have that a lot of other podcasters don't have is you have loyal fans already it doesn't matter if you have a thousand or ten those are loyal people that consistently listen to your show and if those are your ideal clients they are probably going to be your centers of influence ideal clients too the nick saban yeah wow that would be <laughs> that would be a, a heck of a get uh tyler that'd be pretty amazing um so so how much fun would it be we'll just use nick as an example if nick saban Saban shared your podcast with Nick's network. That's like 10 million people right now. That's swinging for the fences. And I do believe you should swing for the fences. Um, but that's how you position it on the front end. Always making sure that you're highlighting something that's specific to them. And you're not shining the light on yourself. You're not going to have Nick Saban come on the show and talk about financial planning. No, you're going to talk about have Nick come on and talk about Nick. And then your job is to do what we've been talking about more and more, which is the sprinkle. How do you take what Nick Saban would say and turn it into something that would be applicable to your financial um, practice? We also believe that it needs to be an interview format, not just a conversation, even though the conversational interview format is important. And they are going to submit questions ahead of time in order for you to make sure... God, I hope this guy's not going to start mowing the lawn. All right, look. Oh, Matt, you better yeah. run. I was really worried that somebody's going to start mowing the lawn once it sparks. Um, but make sure that they know what questions you're going to ask. And, and we really do have, um, it, Jess, do we have the resource here or is that later? It's a little bit later. Yeah, it's coming. Okay, okay. So, so okay, uh, I'm just going to tease you all. We've actually got a free resource for you to really help you with this. 
Um, but before we get there, okay. If you do get Nick Saban on, that's technically Nick Saban saying that you're cool enough, nice enough, and smart enough, and important enough to have Nick Saban on your show. Uh, so who who else do we have? We just had um, uh, who was it? So so uh, Jenna says Barbara. Oh my gosh, that isn't that the lady from um, Shark Tank? Do you know that Jess? Like know. Uh, Jenna, is that the person from Shark Tank? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Right. Yeah. So she so yeah. Oh. So wow. <laughs> Jenna, could you imagine? Holy shnikes, getting a fiercely entrepreneurial famous woman to come on your show. That look look at what that gives you. So one that gives you a reason to reach out to her later, right? Uh to say thank you for being on the show. We are going to talk a little bit about that in just a second. But also if you're not swinging for the fence, and this is just a local estate planning diverse, divorce attorney, uh, it's a, let's say it's a CPA, a real estate agent, um, it always gives you an opportunity to deepen the relationship with them. Uh, one of my favorite uh, things that happens when I go to conferences is the people who I've interviewed for the Top Advisor Marketing Podcast almost always come up to me and, and want to chat more and more. Um, and I only talked with them for 30 minutes. When you have an interview and people feel like you're listening, it changes the depth of the relationship very, very quickly. And it's just such a powerful way to grow. All right, Jess, what am I missing? The dream list. <laughs> the dream list. Do you want to take some of this? Sure. Yeah. 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 This is all about finding, you know, swinging for the fences. But I guess, Matt, we don't always have to, we can swing for the fences, but there are also local people that we can invite on our show. And I think, you know, these are the main qualities that we're looking for, or they're not going to come on and treat it like a, like a commercial. They understand right. that they are giving educational content. And as the host, you're going to help promote them at the end of the show. And by being educational, they promote themselves. Um, you want someone reasonably animated and passionate. I say introverts are always welcome. Like, Love, love, love introverts, but you do want a little bit of, little bit of energy. Um, yeah. And that ties into someone who's enthusiastic about do about mm -hmm. doing it, who truly, truly is genuine because that will come through their enjoyment will come through in the episode. Someone with that strong stance that we just talked about as a podcast producer, I'm always looking for that. People want fresh content <laughs> for their, for their audience. So bring someone on, even if you don't completely agree with them, you can still have Ooh. that discussion. And that's very entertaining as well. And then of course they must, you know, price of admission, they have to share the episode that has to be up front. Matt, is there anything you would add before we go on? Well, ju just with the, the price of admission, because, because I, I definitely think that people don't, uh, they don't feel empowered enough because what they're more concerned about is the number of downloads that you have. Oh, well, you, you only have a hundred downloads. Yeah. But those hundred, hundred people who listen to my show are some of the most successful people in the greater Toronto area or the greater, yeah. wherever you live, you're not good. Here's another wonderful phraseology scripting to use is you're not going to get their attention unless you're coming through somebody like me who has the relationship. And I have not, that's not true, Jessica, and four, so we've recorded 480 episodes. We're releasing 478. I have had one, one person in it who's a pretty big person in financial services who said no. Oh. And, sure. and, and his, his PR company said that uh, this is just small-minded thinking and that he refuses to be on a podcast of anybody who offers anything that's competitive to what they offer. Look, if you've never listened to our show, we have people who are in competition on the show all the time. I mean, like direct competition of Proudmouth and who we are and what we do. That's not the point. The point is, is we want to be able to spread our message, which is why they said no. Um, so swing for the fences. Um, the other thing too is during the, um, the, the, the setup, you really do. I love your first point is, is if they, if they're salesy and I have, we've done this. So out of 480 episodes, we've only done this once where we ended up not publishing the episode right. because from the word one, this dude was selling. And I'm just like, dude, I told you not to do that. So I just let it go. I actually didn't say much because I knew we were going to release it. 
Was it a waste of my time? Yeah, but it did give me this story. <laughs> well, and it shows that well, your audience this, always has to come about first. That, but yeah, like audience is the top priority. Mm-hmm. You're never going to put something salesy mm-hmm. in front of them. So they're not going to like it. And it's, it's going to damage your own reputation too. Yeah. yeah. Not good. <laughs> oh, Matt. So, dude, I totally forgot we were talking about this. I'm, I love, I'm so excited about talking about this. Uh, so, so my wife loves this podcast called Ologies, which is the number one science podcast in the English speaking world. Her name is Allie Ward. It's an unbelievable show. This woman is just, she's one of the best podcasters out there. And my wife wanted me to listen to Allie interviewing John here. Now, John is a mythology PhD. He's actually his PhD in mythology and storytelling. And he consults on Marvel movies and Hollywood movies from a storytelling hero's journey specifically perspective. And so... I listened to the episode and I was like, I was so excited about it. And um, so, so do we have that on the next one? Do we have my conversation? Yes. Yes. I'll show it. Oh. Okay. No. So, so here's what happened. <laughs> this is exactly what I ended up saying to John. And I'm just going to give you a second to go ahead and read this. I had no connection with John. He was a third degree connection for me on LinkedIn. I've used my LinkedIn sales navigator or my free third you know, degree connection messages. And I sent this to him and that's it. Now there's lots of stuff in here that is really important for you to understand. Look, storytelling, education, entertainment, call to action, right? So I am already entirely on brand with who we are at Proudmouth. Listen, mm-hmm. well, I want you to talk about storytelling, which is what his freaking PhD is in, right? This is a template on how you can Um, get people's attention. John came on the show and Jessica, I know you know this because you're the producer. Within the first three minutes, five minutes of that show, he gave a master class in storytelling. A master class. And and we will share, uh, Jessica, in the follow-up email, we'll go ahead and make sure uh, that you guys all get a link to that episode. So let's let's go back to the other side because we actually have a temp or a... Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Kind of a template. And what I want every, I want everybody to do is uh, um, just take a screenshot of this in, in the in the follow up email. But if you want this, take a screenshot of it now. Because yes, is this a template? Absolutely, but it is a template that we use, and it works, and it makes you sound wicked professional. Um, it makes it look like you have your stuff together, you're highly organized, and you're very excited about having them on the show. So make sure that you take a screenshot of this because this is of huge value. Um, this is something that is generally in our Pod Rocket Influence Academy, um, but it is definitely something that is good, good, good stuff. All right, what am I missing, Jess? I think we're on to the marketing. This is like where more Yay! of the magic happens, you know? They've agreed to share their episode, so... Let's go. I'll t- I'll take this if it's okay and you jump in, Matt. So you most important thing is to email your COI. You know, you can do it like the evening before or the day of launch, not too much in advance, because you want it to be like on their mind when it's happening. And we'll show you a template in a second. And then you are going to reach out to them, you know, months after the episode is published, set a reminder on your calendar. And you really just want to stay top of mind with that person and look for opportunities to deepen the relationship. Like, like, oh, like, I don't know. I'm trying not to think of something corny for a follow-up. It's like, you know, I was thinking about the conversation we had. That was so awesome. Thank you again for being on the show. And then maybe segueing into like, how have you been or picking up where you left off in your last Mm -hmm. conversation but just looking, you know, looking for opportunities to be part, you know, continue being part of their circle. And this goes with the last point really is being aware of opportunities to promote that episode again and, you know, do it together. So think about what's going on in your audience's life that makes that episode relevant once again. Like you had an accountant on and now it's tax season or Maybe, you know, you could think of national days, national months, like Women's History Month. Maybe you're going to feature all of the women you've had on your show. 
and you can message the COI, like, here's what we're doing. Let's, you know, let's <laughs> together share your episode and then email, the, email them again. And we'll show you that in a second with all the assets they need. Okay. So this is a template for the launch day email that you can totally customize. The important things here are to follow the two E's. Make it easy and make it exciting. Easy. This email is straightforward and it's specific. It's straightforward. It's, you know, at the bottom, here's the content you need. It's not giving them 20 pieces of content. Um, they don't need, they don't need a bunch of content because what happens is people will get overwhelmed. They feel daunted by it and there are too many options. So people get a little bit, bit stuck and they're less likely to take action. So keep it simple in your email. Even like the, this email itself, it's very, very skimmable. It's not this like big novel. <laughs> they have to read about the launch day and what they need to do. And then the other point is specific. We're saying share it with your clients, prospects and centers of influence. Don't assume that they have all three of those audiences in mind. Like they may not think to, you know, share it with their centers of influence. So specify and then exciting. Oh my gosh. A launch day should be an exciting thing. It's not, you know, you entered into a verbal contract to share, you know, share this episode. It's, it's, oh my gosh, our episode is real, is live. It's ready for you to share. And if you get the sense that the guest is lacking a little bit of confidence about their episode, which can happen, especially if they're new to being a guest. People don't, you know, they take their own brilliance for granted. If they're lacking confidence, here's what I want you to do. Pull out a quote from the episode, put it in the email and said, and say, it was so impactful when you said this. Um, I can't wait for more people to hear this. And we loved it so much we put it on a quote graphic and you're mm. going to attach quotes and video clips to this email. And by the way, <laughs> Matt and I did another webinar called Atomic Content and it shows you, you know, how to find that gold in the episode to turn into the quotes, clips and other types of content. So we'll share that link with you as well. Matt, did I miss anything here? No. Okay. This, this is exactly what all of you need to do. I, 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 you don't need to overthink any of this. Again, we've right. done this 7,000 times. This is incredibly important and powerful. And Jessica, thank you for reminding the audience that you have to remind that podcast guest on who you want to have them share the episode with. It's prospects and centers of influence, right? Um, and, and anything that you can do to make it easy and exciting is only going to make them want to share it more. And, and then let's do this full circle. And yes, they need to you know pay attention to the ton of content webinar that we did. But I love your example of something like Women's History Month. Hey, we are doing a special promo. We're going to, every woman that, you know, we absolutely love their show. We're going to be resharing it in, you know, in, in this month. Uh, you know, same thing with, with whatever, you know, re something ridiculous like opening season for baseball. All of these people love baseball as much as I do, right? There's all sorts of ways. And please, 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 you have to rinse, lather, and repeat and recycle. You have to recycle your content. If not, you're going to run out of stuff. You're not. But it's always good to highlight stuff. And just like that, you know, Christine Lucan episode that we were just talking about, Dave Ramsey hits the news. Bam, Dave Ramsey episode. Uh, Dave Ramsey's daughter hits the news. Dave Ramsey's, you know, um, uh, something that Dave Ramsey talks about, credit cards, city bank fails, Dave Ramsey episode. And you're not going to piss people off by doing that because if they don't want to listen to it, they're going to swipe by. But it's going to be applicable top of mind and show that you're listening and that you're always listening because you've got this content that you've created. Love it. Speaking of Women's History Month, I wanted to show an email that we sent to Cheryl Hickerson. Oh my gosh, we had the amazing honor to have Cheryl on our podcast um, back in Women's History Month. And we sent her this email. So we could break this down 
a little bit, but the main points here are, so we gave her a couple, you know, a few subject lines to choose from. We definitely made an attempt to write in her voice because we know Cheryl. The important thing is that we shared the main takeaways from the podcast and we got the click high up in the post. Now, Cheryl might, you know, she didn't, but I'm just saying as an example, she might totally, you know, totally rewrite this email. Your, your guest might rewrite it. But the important thing is to give them something to work with. You know, like this email has good bones, right? She might prefer to say it a different way. And that's totally, totally cool. But you are sparking the idea for her to send an email and you're giving her, you know, all, all the ingredients to play around with. And then here is the social media post that we sent to Cheryl as well. Again, writing it in her own voice, sharing mm -hmm. the you know key points from the episode. And what I really like here is that we shared an insight so that mm -hmm. it's zero click content, Spark Toro came up with that. It's when people are gaining value in the post itself without having to go to the platform. So that's mm -hmm. what I love about this. Let's keep cruising. Okay. We'll look at some client examples. Making hay with our client, Marsha Miller. Awesome, awesome. Um, she interviewed Martha Underwood, who is the founder of a tech platform. So just an idea, you know, of a COI you could have on your show. And let's see, my Zoom is blocking me a little bit. Martha, okay. Martha posted to promote the episode and she actually used the quote which is great. And she spoke to the quote in her post. So it's like a quote can be a prompt as well. And a quote is just, I don't know, it just plays to the ego in a good way. You know, it's like, it's such shareable content. Guests want to share that. And what I really like here is that Marsha commented on the post, mm -hmm. you know, because that, I mean, that does many things. It helps this post get more impressions it helps this post gain visibility with Marsha's own network. And I mean, it keeps the relationship going. Like, I love how she said, looking forward to future collaborations. Yep. Is there anything you would add to that, Matt? She also tagged everybody. So Martha, the guest, tagged oh, yeah. Marsha Miller, RFG, which is their RI broker dealer. Uh, Marsha, again, right? Also her company, Prism, there's just it's, it's it just gets ticking every box right and and here's the best part is this not only makes martha look great but it makes marcia look great too and that's what we preach and have for really the inception is that rising tide lifts all boats you treat your guests well the guests will treat you well and you both win it is not a zero-sum game everybody can win here and i think this is such a great example Yes. Let's look at another one um, with Kristen at Full Advisor Coaching. She had a business coach on her um, podcast. And I don't know, this is such an opinion, but I think business coaches make some of the greatest guests because they're, they're so passionate. And by having a mm -hmm. business coach on your podcast, you're really demonstrating to your audience that you care about all aspects of their lives. Like this episode is about, um, avoiding burnout, which is a major risk for this audience. Then let's see. Okay. Arlene. Yes. Arlene Moss was the guest and she posted and she actually gave Kristen a very nice endorsement in the post. And then someone con commented, I'm so listening to this tomorrow. Okay. And then I love Kristen's response. Um, she just opens the door mm -hmm. to a future conversation, you know, without being like not at all, not at all pushy, just really welcoming, approachable, enthusiastic. All right, before you leave this, I just want to also say Arlene is direct competition with Kristen. They are both performance coaches. Yeah. You know, Arlene is, a, is an executive coach with XYPN. Um, you know, Kristen, actually, she has her own coaching business, but that's not how they attack this. And it actually showed a lot more unification and unity on the power of coaching by having another coach with her coaching program. And I just, I, that's another thing that I love about this. Yes. All right. 
So we're going to give you something free. Jessica, do we have the link? Can we send them to the, the chatty yes, linky thingy here? Okay. Chat. So we're going to put this in the chat. Now, this is a podcast guest prep system that we have built uh, because not only have we done this successfully with the Top Advisor Marketing Podcast, but we've also done it successfully with our clients. And there's all sorts of wonderful gift things here that we're giving to all of you guys. So please, please, please make sure that you download this. Uh, this is in our Pod Rocket Influence Academy, and I'm going to do a shameless plug and just bear with me here. Listen, if you haven't joined the Academy, there's a bunch of great things like this in there. Um, you also are going to get the opportunity to do eight hours of live Ask an Expert with me, office hours, and Jessica. Jessica did them yesterday. Um, you know, so her and I switch off on doing these office hours. You can come in. It's not just about podcasting. You can talk to us about your content marketing strategy and really what's been going on with you in your practice. And uh, we give you eight hours of that a month plus 34 courses, which there's 34 now. Uh, we just finished 35, uh, which is our atomic content uh, course that we're going to be rolling out here very soon. Uh, so we're always putting more, more courses in. Uh, but but last but not least, it's 200 bucks a month, everybody. It's worth every penny that you have. Please just scan the QR code. Um, join the Academy. We're trying to build a community of like-minded experts who want to hang out with other like-minded experts who understand the power of long-form and short-form content marketing who just want to stop being the best-kept secret and really truly be their own love. Okay, so uh, we're going to start uh, wrapping, not really wrapping things up, but we're on, we're on three. So this is the last one. We said we we're going to do three. And I have to credit my business partner here. So for those of you who know Kirk, uh, he's a genius. And I'm glad he's not here because he'd hate that I said this. But he's an absolute genius. And as we were building Proudmouth, Kirk came up with this idea of the 12 by 20. And after he explained it to me, I just, I, I mean, my mouth was wide open because I just thought to myself, this is brilliant. Like, like is, from an advisor perspective, especially because of some of the regulatory issues that we have to deal with. And so, so, so let's break, let's break this down. So step number one is you're going to go to your A plus client. Okay. And all of you have A plus clients. I don't care what industry that you're in. We have A plus clients. Uh, Marsha Miller is an A plus client. Kristen's an A plus, you know, uh, Christine, you know, all of these people that we highlight, there are our A plus clients, right? And you're going to ask them some questions. But first, you're going to create a spreadsheet. Now, I'm not going to give you a free copy of the spreadsheet because most of you can probably build a better spreadsheet than I can. Um, I don't know, Jessica's probably better at it than I am. But anyway, so you're going to put 12 people on a spreadsheet. You're going to put the next column is going to have their contact information, whatever their preferred means of contact, contact is. And then what you're going to do is you're going to write down what you know about those. Now, these are your best of your best clients. These are the people you absolutely freaking love, right? That's who you're going to put here. Then you can take this in two directions. The first direction is, is you can ask them to be on your show. But that doesn't work as well as you're going to say, okay, so, so Jessica, um, I know that you uh, are hugely passionate about dog rescue, right? So Jessica happens to be one of my favorite people in the world. So if, you know, Jessica's an A-plus client of mine. So I say, hey, Jessica. If I could interview the most impactful person, somebody who you really look up to in the uh, in the, the world of dog rescue, who would it be? Say Brenda, the director of Loyal Rescue. Great. Okay, so here here's what I want to do. So I'm going to reach out to Brenda, and I'm going to say, hey, look, I've got this podcast. One of my bestest clients in the whole world, Jessica, wants me to interview you so that, you know, we can talk more about how my clients and my audience can help your, your dog rescue. And so I'm going to get confirmation with that. And then I'm going to go back to Jessica, because this is an A plus client. Remember, I'm going to go back to Jessica and say, Jessica, I got her. She said, yes, Jessica, I'm assuming you'd probably be pretty excited about that. Yes. 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 Okay. So now what I'm going to do now, some of you might think this is salesy, but I don't care. You're going to do it anyway. I'm going to say to Jessica, after the episode is done and recorded, would you do me a favor and would you share this episode with 20 other people who love dog rescue as much as you do? Because, and I, and I missed one little itty bitty step and I'm sorry, I got ahead of myself there. I'm also going to say, if compliance allows this, I want to thank Jessica, who's one of our best clients. So it's right in the episode that I'm singing the praises of Jessica, who gave me this idea to interview this unbelievable person. 
Now, some of your compliance departments will let you do that. Some of you won't. Um, mostly if you just use their first name or you can say, I have a client, uh, that's a great way. So anyway, we can solve all of those in office hours for you. But then Jessica, so when the episode goes live, I'm going to reach out to Jessica. There's my third touch with Jessica. Jessica, listen, the episode just went live. Here is the link. Thank you so much for being such a wonderful client and giving me such a wonderful idea uh, to interview such an amazing person. Um, we laughed. We cried. I didn't know things. I learned stuff. And, you know, and by the way, you know, if it's a nonprofit, you know, uh, you know, Halloran Wealth Management is writing a check to donate to, you know, the organization. So there's these all of these little things, right, that you can do that is the right thing to do, not just from a business perspective, but from a karmic perspective. This is why the 12 by 20 is so good. Yeah. And I think working on sort of a project with one of your clients, collaborating on this helps strengthen that relationship. Because I know for me, like in a lot of people, I would be passing you questions like, oh, here's here's what I want yep. you to ask, ask her. So it's really something that we would have created together, which is very, mm -hmm. very cool. Yep. So again, screenshot. I already went through this. Yeah. Screenshot it. We're going to continue to move on. Uh, and, and we're going to have a replay of this too, by the way. But um, so I think it's pretty evident on why this works. And I just want to tell everybody very quickly, very few people are doing this. Um, our, our clients, we have some clients who are doing this. Um, but this is one of those things that Kirk and I have kind of tucked away in the academy uh, because we actually are waiting for people to realize what this is uh, because it is just such an amazingly powerful way uh, to do this. In fact, I have asked people um, over and over again who have been guests on the show, who are friends of ours uh, from a podcast perspective. We just keep driving down. Oh, no. Oh, I don't understand what's going on. I, got a little uh, I guess I'm in a third row. Um, but uh, I, 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 will, I will absolutely do this. And in fact, there are times where I'll have guests on the show who this isn't really a 12 by 20 strategy, but I will absolutely ask them to share this with their 20 closest friends. I'll give you a quick example, and I know we're running out of time. But um, do you remember um, the woman who did the death notebook, death, death workbook? The death finder, yes. Yeah. So yeah. I have referred to that episode with so many financial advisors as one-offs just because I think it's just so passionate and so valuable to mm -hmm. them um, that uh, th that's just another way to really look at the 12 by 20. But finding your top 12 clients highlighting their hobbies, getting them to engage in the, here are the questions I want you to ask, the pickleball champion of New Jersey, right? Uh, I'm going to share this with 20 of my people and then thank them on the show if you can do that from a compliance perspective. Absolutely freaking huge. Let's see. I think we have an example. Yes, from one of our clients. Yay! Let me keep going. Yeah. Did you want to talk about this one, Matt? About the wine episode? Yeah. So, 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 yeah. And so, this is a lot more. Maybe you know, the dog rescue might not be your thing, but maybe you're really into wine. And this guy who's on the feature of the cover of Wine Spectator magazine. Now, if you do wine, that's a big freaking deal, right? And so now I'm getting this pretty famous person coming on my show, and that gives me the opportunity to share this show with everybody who I know who's my A plus A B client, even who loves wine. This also gives me the opportunity to go to my local vintner and sit down and say, hey, uh, do you know who Tim O'Rourke is? Oh, I do, you because know, they probably got the cover of the wine magazine in the store. Hey, I just interviewed him on my podcast. Oh, my God, what's your podcast? Ding, 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 right? This is when, you know, all of these things really start working together. And here's the fun part. John and Mike, uh, Michael, who did this, they're they totally geeked out because they're huge wine people. They absolutely love wine. Uh, and this was just so much fun for them to record this episode. Uh, and it was very energy giving to them. And it was very energy giving to, to Tim, their guests. Yeah, that's very cool. What you said about um, sharing with like a local business, because as a client, now you have this association with a local celebrity yeah. that could, you know, spark some opportunities. Mm -hmm. I've never yeah. thought about that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We'll get into the final pieces here, which is the marketing. Again, I always think it's the fun part. So the episode is complete. Amazing. Now it's time to reach out to the client. Matt was saying this earlier, you know, our episode is live. Thank you so much for contributing to this episode with me and making it, you know, a success. And 
now we are going to, you know, follow our two principles of make it easy, make it exciting for that client to share the episode with 20 people in their inner circle who also, you know, enjoy this hobby or interest. And I see this as very much a DM play, you know, it's very casual sharing content about interest. It's less of an email thing. Now, if they want to send an email, they'll do it, but definitely prioritize sending them this template so they can DM people. This is very like quick and to the point because they already have the relationship with that person. And, you know, if they want to add more to it, they will. So there's that one. And then Facebook group, even if they haven't talked about being part of a Facebook Facebook group or social media group, just send this to them anyway. Like, I know there are groups for wine. I know it, you know, so they, chances are they're part of one or they might think about joining now that they have, you know, something really cool to contribute. So with this post, we give a little bit more than in the DM because when this is posted to a group, you're now competing with other posts. So you're going to give a little more context about, you know, we got this guest and here's what they talked about. And then I was surprised to learn because that demonstrates that no matter how long you've been, you know, collecting wine, you've been doing it for 50 years, there's still more to learn. There's still more to discover in this episode. And again, it's that zero click concept where people are getting some insights right away. And then social media blast, you know, kind of like the Facebook group, um, empower them to share this with more than, you know, 20 people in their close network. Like if I shared the dog rescue one on my Facebook, my dad would share that with 50 people in like 20 minutes, you know? So give them the tools to do this. This is a little bit similar to the Facebook group, but even a little bit more context because now the client is posting to people who aren't necessarily in, in on the hobby. So you have to get, give them just a little bit more information about the guest and about the key points. And, and there you go. And all right, Matt. Yeah. So listen, one of the things that we are trying to do because we've gotten feedback about this is trying to give all of you more and more insights on really what we do uh, in our managed influence acceleration MIA product. So these sorts of ideas, these techniques, these, pod- by the way, um, there are nine, just to be clear. Right. We covered three of the nine podcast growth tactics that we take all of our clients through. Um, and, and if you have been a client in the past, if you're not a client, um, really taking a look at what you can do to take your podcast to the next level is really, really important. Um, and, and what's on the screen is is what we do. Like, and we do this every day. We do it hundreds of times a month for our clients. We're a finely tuned machine. Uh, that works very, very well for everybody. Um, And our ultimate goal is, again, to help you stop being the best kept secret. But more importantly, have you rise above the noise so that you can really truly be who you want to be. We talked about that right at the beginning. Who are you for or against? We're going to support that for you because that changes the way that people are going to listen to you. Um, Plus, you're also going to get client-only office hours, uh, which are you know one-on-one time with with me, Kirk, and Jessica. Um, we 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 do those. I do probably seventy-five percent of the client-only office hours. Um, we are there to to support you and help you because again, we're trying to build a community of like-minded people who provide advice, who want to have the opportunity to help more people. And that's not necessarily just with leads, uh, but that's also with. Uh, just providing education. And, you know, Larry, uh, who actually is about to go uh, over his 200th episode, which is insane. Um, he's our longest uh, client. Um, he, he basically says, it just, you know, this is easy. He shows up, he does the show, he drops the mic, our team takes care of everything else. Um, and we, I think we've got one more. So if you guys all don't know who Adrian Miller Heckman is, um, this is just such a powerful, powerful quote from Adri, because I would say that 75 to 80 percent of the people who come through Proudmouth's prospect pipeline know we have a show, have listened to the show, or somebody has talked to them about our show, right? And, and in fact, in our sales process, there are a lot of times where I will refer people to listen to a show that will solve their specific problem 
which just shows more and more social proof. But Adri said that she had closed more business when she had a podcast than she ever had before that because it was just so much wonderful, accessible social proof of that she was pretty and is pretty freaking amazing. All right. So, so here's the thing. If you want to talk more about what you can do to accelerate your influence, if you have an existing podcast and you want to outsource it to somebody else, if you really want to plug into the proven systems that we have here, please scan this QR code or email me or DM me on LinkedIn. I'm more than more than happy to go ahead and take a call with you. Um, even if our product or service isn't the right entire solution for you, I promise you I'm going to give you 45 minutes of my full attention. If there's anything I can do to help you, even if you don't buy anything from us, that's who I am and that's what I do. So Jessica, did I miss anything as we wrap up? I don't think so. The only thing I see is we have a question in the q and I see the notification, but I can't open it. Oh, I got it. So if oh. we do video, would it better to post a to post a graphic with a quote or a small clip from the episode as a teaser? Do, do you want to take that? I think you could do, I would do both because you're going to both. promote the same episode many, many ways. And you can give people different options for consuming the content. So I like both of those ideas. Those are great. Yeah, well, and he had asked, do I do both? And so in, when we did the Atomic Content webinar, uh, we want you to do it all, right? We want you to take a video clip. We want you to push the full video up on YouTube, a couple of five, six, 10, 20, 30 video clips, whatever you can on YouTube Shorts, Instagram, TikTok, wherever you're going to go. Take those short quote uh, posts, turn them into quote memes. This is what the Atomic Content Method is. And we'll make sure that we share that link with the link to the replay. So listen, I want to thank everybody for taking time today. Thank you for being patient with me. Uh, I Guys, I cannot believe this. This is my view. I'm sitting here talking to all of you. Uh, you're looking uh, out over, uh, you know, this unbelievable lake here on here. And, and thank you all for being uh, patient with me. If there were any delays, the internet's a little bit sketchy here, but thank you all for everything. And if we can help you, please make sure that you reach out and we'll be more than happy to help you accelerate your influence and be your own now. So thank you, Jessica. Thank you so much, Matt. Thank you, everyone. Have an amazing day. Bye.